on easy math okay now let's discuss about limits and some standard theorems in limits okay the basic and the basic standard theorem is sandwich theorem okay what is this theorem the squeeze principle is used on limit problems where the usual algebraic methods factorization or algebraic manipulation etc are not effective however it requires to squeeze our problem in between two or other simpler function whose limits can be easily computed and equal use of squeeze principle requires accurate analysis in depth algebra skills and careful use of inequalities okay what is this okay let's see the statement if f g and h are three functions such that f of x is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to h of x okay there are three functions and their order is f of x is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to h of x for all x in some interval containing point c in some interval containing point x is equal to c a point with x is equal to c is contained if okay as you can see here this is the graph of those functions we have to can example of those functions okay we define a point x is equal to c right here limit extends to c f of x is equal to limit extends to c h of x means we we miss it g of x right the limits of x tends to c of f of x and g of x are equal to l then limit extends to c g of x will also be l as you can see here g of x will be in between f of x and h of x if f of x and h of x are equal then the g of x will have the same value there is no other way right this is based on inequalities for this you you want to know what are inequalities and how to solve them and what are operations on them okay the quantity c may be a finite number plus infinity or minus infinity similarly l may also be finite number plus infinity or minus infinity it may be any of those okay now let's see some examples on this topic okay let's take this example we should evaluate limit extends to infinity x square into 2 plus sin square x by x plus 100 Okay, how can we solve this? Think of it carefully. There is sine, right? Okay, sine sine square can have values from zero to one. Sine square x can have values between zero and one. Sine square x can have values between zero and one. Okay, you may ask, sine can have values between minus one and one, right? Then why we have zero and one? Okay, this is not sine x. This is sine square x. sin square x means if we square this sin the greatest possibility is 1 and negative values also will become positive so it will be greater than 0 so we can take 0 less than or equal to x square less than or equal to 1 okay 0 is less than or equal to sin square x is less than or equal to 1 then you can substitute the sin square value as 0 and get the first term first part of the inequality and then if take sin square x and form second form second second term second part and keep one and form the third part okay if you substitute sin square x as 0 then you will get x square into 2 plus 0 means 2x square by x plus 100 the same and the middle term will be the same and the last term if you substitute one 2 plus 1 which is 3 x square into 3 3x square by x plus 100 okay now let's apply limits to these 
let's apply limits limit extends to infinity 2x squared by x plus 100 is less than or equal to limit extends to infinity x squared into 2 sine square x by x plus 100 less than or equal to limit extends to infinity 3x squared by x plus 100 okay now what can we do okay now we can't simplify this 2x squared by x plus 100 to find limit extends to infinity so the value of this will be infinity okay in other ways if you apply l hospitals rule 2x square becomes 4x 4x by 100 4x by 1 means 4x if you substitute infinity you will get the value infinity similarly with limit extends to infinity 3x square by x plus 100 you will also get infinity so this two are infinity according to sandwich theorem the middle term is also infinity so the value of limit extends to infinity x square into 2 plus sine square x by x plus 100 is nothing but infinity. Okay, now let's see a method to solve some types of limits. Newton Leibniz formula. Okay, I think I have spelled that correctly. Okay. What does this formula tell us? How can we use this formula? Okay, this formula tells us how to find the definite integral. Okay, you may ask, this is the limits chapter. Why we have got integration here? Okay, some problems in limits may contain integrals too. First solving them, we can use this product, use this formula. Okay, you will understand this completely when we, dis when we discuss about integration. For now, let's just understand this. Okay, i of x, let there be a function i of x. So, you may take f of x too, but let's take i of x as in that case. i of x be a function which has a value of integral of phi of x to psi of x. Okay, phi and psi are Greek letters. And here integral of integral is represented with a Greek letter rho. F of t dt. Okay, here dt means the difference in the t. Difference in the variable t, dt means, and f of t means that is a function. And now Newton Leibniz formula states that d by dx of i of x. Here d by dx means it in it denotes derivative of that d by dx of i of x means it is the derivative of i of x with respect to x is equal to f of psi f of psi of x into d by dx of psi of x minus f of phi of x into d by dx of phi of x okay this is the formula please make sure you remember this Okay, what is this formula? Let's break down to it. d by dx of i of x means that is the change in i of x with respect to d of x. With respect to dx. And f of psi of x means you have substituted the value psi of x in place of t into d by dx of psi of x means it denotes the change in psi of x with respect to x minus f of phi of x into d by dx of phi of x. It is same. Okay, now let's see an example on this. Okay, this is the example. Now, let's see what is this and how to solve this. Okay, the problem is we should find the value of limit extends to 0. 3 into integral of 0 to x e power minus t power x dt minus 3x plus x cube by 3x power 5. Okay, this is some big formula, right? Let's see how can we solve this. Okay, first let's apply L hospitals rule because as in the derivative, as in the formula before, we need d by dx of, right? So let's apply L hospitals rule. Okay, 
then it becomes limit x tends to 0. The derivative of the above function is 3 is a constant. So we can write that before and d by dx of this whole function. By 15 x power 4. x power 5's derivative is 3. x power 5 derivative is 5 x power 4. You should multiply with 3 as there is 3 before. So it will become 15 x power 4. Okay, now applying Newton Leibniz formula to d by dx of integ integral of 0 to x e power minus t power x dt. Then what will it become according to the formula? First we need f of psi of x, right? f of psi of x means we should apply here psi of x is nothing but x. We should apply x in place of t. Then it becomes e power minus x power minus x power x d by dx of x because psi of x is x minus e power minus 0 into d by dx of 0. <coughs> okay, if you haven't checked it, if you haven't remembered the formula, go check it out. Is equal to e power minus x power x. Okay, then this thing becomes 3 into d by dx of integral of 0 to x e power minus t whole power x dt minus 3 plus 3x square by 15x power 4. We can replace this whole first term with e power minus x power x. So, 3 into e power minus x power x minus 3 plus 3x square by 15x power 4. Okay, you can, if you apply the value of x, then you will get the value. If you apply x as 0, then you will get the value of 0 by 0. So, let us apply L hospital rule again. Then you will get 3 into minus, minus 3 into 2x into e power minus x power x minus x square plus 6x by 60x cube. e power minus x square will be the same and then we should find the derivative of x square then it becomes 2x and you have minus symbol so you will get the minus sign here and 3 derivative of 3 is 0 and derivative of 3x square is 6x 15x power 4 is 60x cube and you can take 6x common from this then it becomes minus 6x into e power minus x square minus 1 by 60x cube if you cancel you will get Limit x tends to 0 minus e power minus x square minus 1 by 10x square. Okay, then it will become 1 by 10 into e power limit x tends to 0 e power minus x square minus 1 by minus x square. That is equal to if you apply the values you will get 1 by 10 into 1 which is 1 by 10. So, the answer of this is 1 by 10. This is how you should solve with Newton, Newton Leibniz formula. Okay, now let us see the another theorem. Summation of series using definite integral as the limit means how to use definite integral as the summation. Okay, the expression of the form limit n tends to infinity 1 by n summation of r is equal to phi of x to psi of x f of r by n is equal to integral of a to b f of x dx okay now let's see what is this formula and how can we understand that the formula is limit n tends to infinity means there is a limit with the variable n approaching infinity and 1 by n into sum summation of as you can see this is the capital sigma which represents summation r is equal to phi of x to psi of x mean the value of r varies from phi of x to psi of x f of r by n there is a function with r by n r by n as the variable that will be integral of a to b f of x dx. Okay, now just understand like this. 
Now here, how can we understand this? What happened in this? Okay, in this, sigma is replaced by rho, means integral. Summation is replaced by integral. And then r by n is replaced with x, means x is r by n. And 1 by n, this 1 by n is replaced with dx. And to obtain a and b, how can we find the values of a and b? Okay, a is limit n tends to infinity phi of x by n. b means limit n tends to infinity psi of x by n. The value so obtained is the required sum of the given series. We will get this value, right? This value is the required sum. Okay, this is the whole formula. Now, let's see some examples on this. Okay, now let's see the example of we should find the value of limit n tends to infinity n factorial by n power n whole power 1 by n. We should find the value of this. Okay, there are four options there. The answer can be either 1 by e or e or e square or 1 by e square. Okay, now let's see how can we solve this. Okay, let us imagine this is a. This whole limit is a. a is equal to limit n times infinity n factorial by n power n whole power 1 by n. Okay, now to solve this, we need to use the summation formula, right? We discussed it before. So, we need to represent this as a sum. How can we represent this as a sum? And the other thing, as you can see in the formula, we have 1 by n. Right? We have 1 by n into summation of something. So, how can we get 1 by n? As you can see here, 1 by n is in power. How to get that to normal? Okay, you can apply logarithm, right? Log a power n is equal to n log a. So, if you apply logarithm, you will get log a is equal to limit n tends to infinity. 1 by n comes to the starting. So, 1 by n log the whole thing. Okay, n factorial, we can write like n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 and so on until 1. By n power n, you can write like n into n into n into n and so on until n times. Okay, n factor will have n terms and n power n have also n terms. So, you can write that like n terms. Here, the value in the numerator decreases from n to 1, but in the denominator it is constant. So, how can we write? Let's take the summation. Okay, this is log a into b into c and so on until z. Then it will be log a plus log b plus log c plus and so on. That is a property in logarithmic functions. Okay, now from that you can write that as a summation, right? It has log n by n, the first and the log n minus 1 by n, log n minus 2 by n. Means here there is a value or which varies from 0 to n minus 1, right? Because the last term is 1, not 0. 0 to n minus 1, log, it is decreasing, right? So, we should use n minus r by n. Okay, this is in the same way, right? So, how can we do that? Here, this sigma is replaced with rho or integral. And it is replaced by integral a to b. Now, we know what are a to b, right? a means limit n tends to infinity phi of x by n. Limit n tends to infinity psi of x by n. Okay, here psi of x is n minus 1. n minus 1 by n. What is that? You will get n by n. 1 minus 1 by n. If you apply limit n tends to infinity, is there, right? So, you will get n minus 0, which is 1 minus 0, which is 1. So, you will get 1. And here you will get phi of x by n. Limit n tends to infinity phi of x by n. Here it is 0. So, you will get the value 0. 0 and anything is 0. And then here you will get the value 1. Okay. Let us see the formula. As you can see that is f of x into d of x. 
here what is f of x here f of x is nothing but into log 1 minus x okay this if you divide this you get integral of 1 integral of 0 to 1 1 into log 1 minus x as r by n is x right if i divide this what will you get n by n which is 1 minus r by n means x 1 minus x into dx which is minus 1 Okay, how can we get those value of minus 1? Okay, in this function, you should apply, you should apply the integral to log 1 minus x. And then you should substitute values 0 and 1. If you substitute 0, you will get 0 minus, you should take f of 1, f of 0 minus f of 1. Which is nothing but minus 1. That is, you will discuss about that in chapter called as definite integrals. We will discuss about that later. Log a base e is minus 1. So, a will be e power minus 1. So, the option a is the correct answer. Okay guys, this is the complete topic of limits. Tomorrow onwards, we will discuss topic called as continuity and differentiability. It is an interesting topic. Okay, if you want you can go to the internet and check all the problems which you can all the problems on limits and see whether you can solve them or not if you are not able to solve them comment down below i'll answer them okay guys this is for today's video if you like the video smash the subscribe button ring that bell icon notification and listen to the video if you have any doubts comment down below i'll answer them in the next video